Welcome to the Luke Messias Show. Earlier this week, in our first episode, we talked about how conservatives were flexing when it came to really talking to lawmakers about what we need and demand out of a gender modification ban. And the Texas Senate, who has been very responsive throughout really the last several sessions to conservative Republican grassroots Texans, actually responded and delivered a huge policy victory. We're going to talk about that policy victory. We're also going to talk about new polling that's come out that shows that, guess what? Republican voters are really Republican. So that's always encouraging. And then we're going to close with some thoughtful insights that I think give us perspective on how we're supposed to handle the transgender movement moving forward. Let's get to the show. One of the big differences between the Texas Senate and the Texas House of Representatives is that when grassroots conservative Republicans come to individual senators or to the really the Senate as a whole, as a chamber, and say, hey, we're concerned about this policy, they actually respond. They look at the policy, they consider the concerns, and what they did literally an hour or two after we filmed last, like the show earlier this week, our last show, the Texas Senate actually reversed their position and took out policy. And I don't even know if you really say they reversed their position because the truth is that a lot of them said that they really didn't see the amendment going on. The way the Senate works is that there is a whole lot of trust within the institution of the Senate, which means that when an author of a bill brings up an amendment to their own bill and they say that it doesn't change it substantially, most senators believe them, right? And one thing we can know now that time has passed is that Senator Campbell herself probably did some things with that amendment that she absolutely did not intend to do. She didn't want children to be able to be transitioned fully just because they had already started down the path. And so the Senate got up and they removed the amendment that a lot of grassroots conservatives had th said they were concerned about and passed a very good bill, Senate Bill 14. Now, this is why conservatives need to constantly be on the alert, speak up, speak out, and contact your legislator when it comes to problematic policy that gets enacted. Ultimately, what we care about is the policy. What we care about is what actually passes, becomes law, gets signed by the governor, and then impacts our fellow Texans. And in this case, there was language in that bill that had been put in that had a lot of ramifications, ramifications that would have hurt a lot of children. This is a huge victory, guys. I cannot understate how big the victory is. And I also can't understate the difference that it reveals between the House and the Senate. I mean, here's the truth. The House will, not only can they not admit if they do something wrong, They'll gaslight you even if they kill conservative legislation. Like, do you understand how this works? They, they killed the ban on gender modification last session. And if you talk to Republicans in the Texas House of Representatives, they won't even admit that to you. If you talk to conservative Republicans outside of a handful of members, most of them will just say, man, stinks that that thing died, but we're going to do it this session. They won't even say, stinks that Stephanie Click and Dustin Burroughs and Dade Phelan did not want this, thing, this bill to pass. So we should celebrate the fact that the Texas Senate actually took a look at the policy that had come onto the bill and changed it. Took a look at the policy and said, we can do better and enacted just that. Now, this bill is not out of the woods and we're going to keep you updated on it throughout the entirety of the session. The next six weeks are going to be absolutely crazy. We have budget day coming up on Thursday. There's a lot we could talk about when it comes to budget day. One of the things that I'll let you know is that there was recently a Republican poll that was released by the Defend Texas Liberty PAC. Every month, the Defend Texas Liberty PAC releases a statewide poll of Republican voters. And one of the debates when it comes to the budget as a whole is how we're going to provide property tax relief to Texans. And this poll actually asked them their opinion when it came to what kind of property tax relief they thought would be best. It's really interesting because for a long time, we have said that the best way to deliver meaningful and long-lasting property tax relief is to compress the rate. And I'm going to get a little wonky with y'all here for a second. But there's these battles going on between the chambers. Both chambers want to spend some money on compressing the rate, billions of dollars on compressing the rate. But then the Senate wants to spend billions more providing homestead exemptions to Texans. And the Texas House wants to spend money 
capping appraisals. And the reason I say spend money is that it's not providing relief. It's not taking your current tax bill and pushing it down, but they're saying, hey, we're going to cap your appraised value at 5% so that it cannot continue to go up at 10% if you're homesteaded or more if it's a rental property. And that's going to cost the government money, but it's not going to give you relief. There is a difference and it's an important distinction to understand. See, in Austin, they think if it costs them money, meaning in the future, they're going to say, well, we're going to have a harder time taking more money from them in the future. Therefore, that's going to cost us money. That's not actual property tax relief. That's just meaning that they're taking less of your money in the future. Therefore, they have to find some other way to fund the government. And since they don't want to cut the government, it's going to cost them money. The cool thing is, for a long time, Texans for Fiscal Responsibility, the Huffines Liberty Foundation, a lot of conservative groups have said the absolute best way to do this is just to compress the rate further and further. Take the total number of dollars you want to spend on property tax relief and put it into compression. And when Defend Texas Liberty PAC polled Republican voters, they said, do you believe Texas lawmakers looking to reduce property taxes should cap tax appraisals, increase homestead exemptions, or reduce property tax rates? 55% said reduce property tax rates, 25% said increase the homestead exemption, and 20% said provide property tax caps. Now, this provides the legislature a clear path to understanding what it is the people of Texas want. They want their rates to go down because they understand that if you mess on the appraisal side or the homestead exemption, all these things, they will eventually get eaten up. And here's the truth. I almost would be fine if we did all three of them. I'd be fine if you capped appraisals, put in a big homestead exemption, and compress the rate. But the reality is that Texans understand that if you just cap appraisals, then my rate can go up and down, and I'm still going to get hosed by all these local governments. And they understand that if you give a homestead exemption, but my appraisal keeps climbing up, over time, it will eat away at the homestead exemption. And if I have a nicer house, a more expensive house, it's not really saving me all that much. But this fundamental rate, if we are trying to get Texas on a pathway to zero, the more we compress, the better. The other really controversial, uh, the, a controversial vote that will take place during the budget debate is going to be Abel Herrero's longstanding amendment. Now you have to understand, I think this is the fourth session he has brought this up. So Abel Herrero is a Democrat from South Texas and he has an amendment that he has offered on the budget every single session for the last several sessions that says no money from this budget may go to a voucher or school choice program. We've talked about school choice on our show. It is something that the governor has prioritized. The lieutenant governor has prioritized. The Republican Party of Texas has prioritized. And the Democrat Party and the teacher unions are very strongly opposing. Here's the truth. No one knows if we have the votes in the Texas House of Representatives. And in a weird way, we actually still won't know even after this budget amendment, but we'll have a much better idea of where the battle lines are drawn. So here's what's going to happen. Charlie Guerin, a Republican from Fort Worth, and Abel Herrero joint authored this amendment. So it is a bipartisan amendment saying no school choice. No money from this budget may go into school choice. Over 84% of Charlie Guerin's own Republican voters voted for a school choice program. They literally voted on the ballot in March to say, we want a program of school choice where the dollars follow the child. The dollars follow the student, not the system. They're not put into a monopolistic system, but the parents can decide where the child goes and the money follows the child. That's what they want. 84% of the voters in Charlie Guerin's district, but Charlie Guerin is teaming up with the Democrats in his, in his chamber to say, hey, let's kill this program from the start. What I think you're going to see is that Republican House leadership is likely to message to other members, even members that aren't sure where they stand on school choice, even members that are going to try to gut the school choice program as much as possible. Hey, you need to vote against this amendment and say that this is not the way the process is supposed to work, that we're hearing these bills in committee, that we will bring something to the floor, that we will debate that thing on the floor, and then we will decide where we go as a state but this is the wrong place for this discussion. They're gonna to try to give these Republican members an off-ramp to vote against the amendment without saying they're some huge school choice person. And so we're gonna to have to see. But the vote is gonna be closer than most people want it to be because there are enough Republicans who will team up with the entire, almost the entire Democrat caucus uh, to actually try to pass this amendment and say no. 
We want to keep the status quo where it is. The other thing to look is to see which Democrats potentially break with Abel Herrero, and we will also be looking for that and reporting on that after the budget debate. We'll be right back. Do you want to get paid to make a difference? Gen Z is now in Congress, and if you're between the ages of 18 and 25, you may not necessarily want to be in Congress, but if you still want to fight for the future, we have the opportunity for you. Texas Scorecard is Texans' leading news source for citizens, and we're looking for young fighters to join our fellowship program. Texas Scorecard offers a paid internship for spring, summer, and fall semesters, allowing participants to get their feet wet in the media business. Fellows can apply for one of three tracks, writing, research, and administration. Think you have what it takes? Fellows often leave the program with the opportunity to continue the work full time. The last two takeaways uh, from the statewide poll that I saw that were regarding just Texas voters' opinions on various policies. One is that 57% of Republican voters support ending birthright citizenship and uh, support ending the practice of giving an individual legal status citizenship, not just legal status, but citizenship in the United States of America who have two illegal parents who just crossed the border and broke the laws to get here. So I think this is something that is going to be con a continued discussion within the Republican Party, but Republican Party historically has been bad on the immigration issue until, let's say, the last six years. We love talking about border security. We love talking about rule of law, but we don't actually like talking about the fundamental immigration issue. I was talking to a friend just this last week and they were talking about how, well, you know, really the border is a, is a public safety issue. I said, no, it's not. They, well, no, it is a public safety issue. I said, no, Republicans like calling it a public safety issue because they don't like calling it an immigration issue. The problem with the border is that millions of people can cross illegally. If you have a border where millions of people cannot enter your country illegally and then be illegally in your country, then you also have a border in which it's much harder to get other things across your border, including illegal weapons, including illegal drugs, including any other crime any other movement of illicit, illegal contraband of any kind. The problem at the southern border is that we have a mass invasion of illegals coming into the country. Republican voters are awakened to this reality. And that's why 57% of them are so aware of the problems that we have that we're literally ushering in entire states of population on an annual basis through the Texas Southern border, that they're saying, hey, we need to end birthright citizenship. We need to stop saying that if two illegal parents break the law and come into this country and they have a baby, that baby is automatically granted citizenship in the United States of America. The other one that I was very encouraged by was whether or not Texas should uh, vote to recognize Ramadan. Now, this has become a recent controversy because the Texas House of Representatives has been ushering in more pro-Muslim resolutions than really at any time in recent, I think at any time in Texas history. I think we can very safely say that, that in any time in Texas history, we have never celebrated the Muslim faith as much as the Texas House of Representatives has celebrated it in the last several weeks. But the interesting thing is the Defend Texas Liberty Pact didn't use the word celebrate when talking about these resolutions. They actually just said, do you believe the Texas legislature should vote to recognize Ramadan, another Muslim holiday, and then other Muslim holidays? So basically Ramadan or other Muslim holidays. 75% of Republican voters across the state said no, 12% said yes, and 13% said they weren't sure. Now, were those 12% that said no, they should recognize those holidays? Okay, are those like the real tolerant ones? Are the 75% just bigots? No. They're Americans who understand that America and Texas were founded on Christian principles, Christian ideals, and that Muslim countries are antithetical to what it means to be an American. Now, that doesn't mean we don't have religious liberty in this country. Did you know that people can come and actually worship whatever they want? That's an interesting idea. It is a reality. And the weird thing is that several new Muslim legislators have convinced almost the entire Republican caucus that that's not what religious liberty is, that the fact that they can come and practice their faith, a faith that when practiced in other countries that have a majority Muslim population leads to absolute tyranny, 
that the fact that they can practice their faith is not religious liberty. That real religious liberty is all of the Republican caucus celebrating Ramadan with them. That is what religious liberty is. Republicans don't believe that. Republican lawmakers shouldn't believe it. And I'm actually very encouraged by just how many Republican voters see what this really is. Guys, there's a lot of things going on in our country, and we talk about a lot of them on this show. But I'm going to close with this because when the Texas Senate and the Texas House and these gender modification battles and the drag show ban, literally the Texas Senate just yesterday passed a ban on drag shows in public places or in the presence of a child, a great bill. They passed their library ban, which said that these pornographic materials can't be in the presence of children. That passed the Texas Senate. All of these bills are passing. And it has really brought to light a fundamental conversation of how we are to address the transgender movement. And I don't think it can be summarized any better than actually some recent comments made by Matt Walsh, which I'm going to play for y'all here in a moment. Because the thing is, there's some in our movement that have mistaken our position as, as long as children aren't transitioned, then everything's okay. As long as we can just pass some bills that make sure that a 12-year-old is not transitioned, a little girl's not turned into a little boy, and a little boy's not turned into a little girl, then everything's okay. And the mistake made with that position is the refusal to acknowledge that a man, an adult man, can never become a woman. An adult woman can never become a man. And we should never promote and protect these utter lives that the transgender movement is trying to force on us. And if we don't recognize that, we are going to lose and we are going to lose soundly. This transgender modification ban on minors is the very first step of many that have to be taken to protect all of our fellow citizens. And I really think that Matt Walsh's articulation, his message to people in the transgender community will maybe help us just a little bit remember what this battle's about. So let's go to this clip. God bless you and God bless Texas. Trans ideology is the most toxic evil our nation faces today. And it must be burned to the ground, destroyed completely. Now, if you are a trans identified person, and you hear that, you should be the most on board with this campaign. Because trans ideology has taken more from you than it's taken from me or any of the rest of us. You are a victim. You are. Just not in the way that you think. You are a victim of transgenderism. You have fallen prey to this ideology. And the ideology is wrong, which means that you are wrong. You are wrong about your view of the world and of reality and of yourself. You are deeply, catastrophically wrong, and you are on a path that can only lead to despair, I promise you. It cannot have any other outcome. Most people will not tell you this. Okay, they will lie to you because they don't care about you. Your life means nothing to them. The people who are pushing this on you and telling you it's so great and applauding it, they don't give a shit about you. That's what you need to understand. Your life means nothing to them. And your crippling regret that you will feel in the future, when you feel it, it will not face them. You will come back to them and you will say, how could you have gone along with this? Why didn't you tell me the truth? How did you let me do this to myself? They won't care enough to even answer you. They will leave you to wallow in the shattered remnants of your life and your broken and mutilated body. And they will feel nothing because they are using you. They are deceiving you. I am not. They don't care about you. I do. Now, you can scream at me all you want, as some in this room already have. Call me every name in the book. You can wish death on me and my family. You can threaten to kill me and my family. You can show up at my house. 
You can dox me. You can come after my wife and children. And you have already done all of that many times. But it won't change the truth of what I'm saying to you. And it won't stop me from saying it. If you are a trans woman, you are not a woman. If you are a trans man, you are not a man. If you are non-binary, you're not that either, because that's not even a thing that doesn't make sense. <laughs> you will never be the version of yourself that you are trying to be. You never will. That version is a figment of your imagination. It is a mirage in the desert. It is not real. You are an entire universe away from actually being what you claim to be. And no matter how much you pursue that phantom, you will always remain as far from it as you are right now and as you were when you started. And here's the thing. You know that. You know that, don't you? Deep down within yourself, you know it's all a lie. You call yourself a trans woman, but you look at the real women in this room tonight, and you know that you will never be what they are. You know that. You know they have something you will never have. You will only ever be a pale imitation at best, and not a good one. You will only ever be like a really bad cover band butchering a classic and stripping it of everything that made it beautiful. This is all you will ever be if you continue down this road. You recognize this, and you know it. I know you know it because that's why you obsessively demand that everyone affirm you and convince you of the validity of your own identity. You know, I, I've never desired to be affirmed in my manhood by anyone. If someone told me that I'm not a man, okay, it would not faze me in the slightest because I know that I am one. You can't make me question that because it's just true. I don't need anyone to affirm it. Now, you do need to be affirmed because your self-identity is a fragile stack of empty boxes perched up on a ledge just waiting to be blown over by a, a slight breeze. It's all fake. It's all a lie. It's a lie you tell yourself, but you will never truly believe. And I know there's a voice inside your head that whispers to that to you at night. I know there is. The voice you try to drown out, the voice you hate even more than you hate me. Listen to that voice. Stop running from it. Stop running from yourself. It's a race you cannot win. And why would you want to? There's nothing wrong with who you are, who you physically, innately, actually, biologically are. Be that person. Accept yourself as yourself. You have no choice anyway. You're only given this one body, this one identity. You'll never have another in this life. You can go to as many surgeons as you want. They cannot give you a new body. They can only mutilate the one you already have. And you know, the fact that you'll never have another identity or another body, that's okay. Until recently, I'd always thought that the slogan, be yourself, was just a vapid kind of a new age platitude. Maybe it was intended to be originally. But these days, it's taken on real meaning and real urgency. Yeah, be yourself. Your actual self. It's the only self you'll ever have. And there's nothing wrong with it. Stop hiding from who you are. Embrace yourself. Embrace the truth. Come live in reality. And be free. Thank you, everybody. No ads, no paywalls, no government grants, and no corporate masters. Just real news for real Texans. This is Texas Scorecard.